you'll find that, yes, I'm an avid coffee drinker. And this mug is actually one of my favorite ones because I'm a huge fan of Disney's Nightmare Before Christmas and Jack Skellington because he asked the question that I often hear from small businesses when they're first encountering Google My Business. And that's, what's this? What's this? They want to know what it is. Well, truly, I will respond to them as Jack. It's magic in the air. That's exactly what it is. It's the opportunity for you to be seen and to be visible. But a lot of times businesses don't know how to use it. Um, they don't know uh, really how to maximize and optimize its visibility. Or they don't even know if they have the bandwidth to be able to do this in addition to everything that they're doing in their business. You know, we know your business, you're busy being butcher baker and candlestick maker, taking care of your best customer, and truly to add another hat in your role of being chief marketer sometimes can be overwhelming. But I'm hoping this video will help you as you make decisions whether you're going to do this or you'll hire somebody or bring somebody on into your team that can support you in this. What can I say? One of the biggest challenges in marketing are knowing the right questions to ask. Today, I will cover with that with you. Hello, this is Maria Elena, Maria Elena Duran, and I'm excited that you are here. Please make sure that you stay connected with me by subscribing and hitting that bell to be sure you know when the next video is uploaded. I'm excited to have you here and everything that I talk about is how you market in moments to be able to make the most impact and income from your online marketing. One of the ways to do that is by making sure that you take a good look at your Google My Business profile. Is it performing? Is it doing everything that you need it to do? Is it optimized? Now, you could do all of this yourself, but here's something that I want you to just take a moment to think about. Just because you can, does it mean you should? I know that's a question that we've heard posed other times, sometimes even in a meme, but I want you to think about that because there are many things that you are good at. There are many things that I'm good at, but that doesn't mean that I should be the one doing that. I can do some graphic design but what would take a creation or would take me to make a creation would be anywhere from four to five hours that may take somebody who's very skilled at doing that 30 minutes. So you need to ask yourself that because sometimes we need to have the right people in place or the right systems in place. And systems is an acronym for save yourself significant time, energy, and money. A lot of times small businesses are burdened with having to create everything as things are happening or as customers make requests or as they have needs within their marketing and they see holes where they do need to have something else in place. And now they're creating it. And that takes a lot of energy and emotion and it takes their attention away from being able to be the best at whatever they are best at, be it their product, service, or solution. So for you, something to consider is Maybe I need to do this, or maybe I need to know how to make the right decisions to be able to choose the right person or the organization that can do this for me. When we look at our Google My Business profile, some of the basic things to begin with is number one, making sure you claim and verify that you are the business owner. This is key. You can't utilize all of the functions of Google My Business without doing this first. And it's also something that later on down the road will help you in making sure that you're answering your online reviews. We'll make sure that you are also notified of different things happening and that you have the full, as I said earlier, functionalities of Google My Business. Once you've claimed and verified your Google My Business profile, now you can start looking at that back office or the dashboard of Google My Business and making some changes that really show the uniqueness of who you are, plus also take advantage of the search and the reach of Google. One of those are in your info section as you start taking a look at your about us, your description. So this is your mini about us where you share with people what it is that you do. Why would somebody want to do business with you? Or what problems do you solve? What does your product provide? Those are the questions that need to be answered then in there. If you look at the About Us page of your website, or maybe even your Facebook business profile, it's going to mirror something like that. 
but again, make sure that it's covering not only what you do, but who you serve and how you help them. It's almost a shift in the way you speak and write because a lot of times we are used to writing in the format of saying, I would do this, I do that. This is in a third party format, but again, also conversational. So it's a very, very difficult line that you walk and you want to make sure that you're talking about your business. So our ABC company enjoys helping customers who are searching for what they need to do next to make their computer work well, or they, we help and make and support businesses who are going through the decision of who to best choose to be able to market and be that brand voice and first impression that we have online. So you see how just those quick shifts in the actual copy and the text that's provided within the information section of your Google My Business profile positions you better when someone's searching for you. And it really is important for you to understand how people search. And I cover that in, in more videos here within the channel. So take a look around. I'm not going to cover it here today because I do want to give you a quick overview and this will help you in making decisions on either who you hire or whether you do this yourself. So number one, I would ask somebody that I'm hiring, how do you handle the information section? What kind of information do you need from me? And what would be, um, what would be best? What would I need to provide to be able to assist you? Now, if somebody has a cookie cutter template that they're using, I would steer very clear, highly clear away from that because you don't want that to be a cookie cutter that you put out there, cookie cutter information. The reason you don't is because when you look the same as everybody else, you become a commodity. And now we're all competing on price. You really want to stand out as what makes you so uniquely you. You want to express your VPs. These are your vision, your purpose, your values, your passion. And you want to make sure that that's being exuded in all the voice of your brand online and offline. And that does take some time and it does take working with a company organization or if you're working with a freelancer or bringing a team member in that understands that this is the focus and what the end game is. So that's number one, you're about us. Now take a look at your hours too. Your hours do need to reflect your true hours of operation. There is nothing more upsetting than taking the time to look up a business, taking the effort to go out to get to this business and then realizing that the hours that were posted that you found on search and maps is not true because that business is closed. And they're not mad at Google when they discover this, they're mad at you. And that's all a part of that first impression that they now have about you. And do understand that it does take 56 other contact times. That's not minutes, that's not emails, that's not posts or tweets, that's 56 other contact times for you to change a first impression. We as small businesses, we don't have the luxury of all that extra time to go back and change a first impression. So we need to get it right in the first. And you need to know when you bring someone in, if they're going to do that for you, if they get that and they get and understand the urgency, because this is somebody who is spending your hard earned dollars. Then after you look at the hours, take a look at your category, your business category. You're provided one when you first go through the verification process. But after you've claimed it and you've been verified as the owner, now you have nine other subcategories that you can also put there to help explain, again, what you uniquely provide to the market or to your customer. Take the time to look through those. There are over 3,000 categories. So find the ones that really focus and match you. Now, if you don't find any that match perfectly in the 3000, maybe you found just two or three. So you're not taking full advantage of the nine categories. I would relook again because we're changing those categories all the time. They're being updated by Google regularly. Or I would also consider adding in my services or products, those things that are so unique. Maybe they're the top three services that I'm asked for or that we sell or the top five products that we sell. This will help you again stand out when people find you within search and maps. Then the other item I would also take a look at is making sure that I've set up 
the ability to post and I know what post I'm going to use. Now, again, there's a whole other video about posting. I'm not going to go into detail in this video, but please go look for that other video to make sure that you are maximizing the visibility that is available and free within the Google My Business tool. To recap, where I see businesses often falling or falling short is number one in claiming and verifying their business because it is a process sometimes. It takes uh, four days, which sometimes can turn into two weeks before you actually get your verification postcard. A lot of businesses will make the mistake of trying to make changes while it's going through the verification process. And when I say make changes, it's they want to change their name, they want to change the address, um, some key important parts that are truly what Google is trying to verify. Don't change those during the process. But that's number one. Number two is that they don't put correct information. They copy and paste it from their other online properties. Again, not keeping the mindset of what are the questions that your customer's asking in their decision journey and how best can this text that you're putting in info mirror those questions so you are relevant and showing up when they're searching for your product, service, or solution. And number three is that they don't look at their hours of operation. So they leave that just to the standard or they don't consider some of the adjustments in their hours. There could be different hours for different holidays, maybe even um, considering some of the different changes that have, have happened because of the pandemic. They may not even be including those different attributes and hours that um, are special hours. And the more you can customize it and make it easier for your customers to do business with you, the better. And then the fourth area that I see a lot of people not doing well on is making sure they customize their categories. Again, they, they'll find one category of the 3000 that seems to be an almost fit, not realizing that you could have subcategories that will even help you, again, hot showcase and highlight what makes you so unique. And then you can also go in there with attributes. You can go in there and make sure that you're uh, looking at your services and your products and that those are also being shown within your Google My Business profile. As you hire and take a look at potentially an organization or a person to help you with this, make sure that they understand the importance of that. And some of the questions you can ask are, um, how do you handle categories within Google My Business? Or how do you take care of being able to put attributes or um, different uh, services and products? Or you might even ask them and leave that to the, for them to fill in the blank by saying, so what is it that you do after the Google My Business profile is verified? What do you do to customize it for us? And then just sit back and listen. But you are going to want to listen for those key components that I just spoke about, because if you don't, you will then get something that's very generic and you will be then now in that commodity bucket and we want to keep you out of there, right? Now, even if you have multiple locations or maybe you have locations um, and different branch offices, you still can use Google My Business because often with multiple locations, there's still somebody local who's there and a part of the community. And you want to make sure that you are maximizing your local marketing and local SEO, search engine optimization. Now, Understand that scalable doesn't mean that you sacrifice the personal connection. You can develop that by making sure that you have a Google My Business profile for each of your locations. So if you are in that mode of decision making, whether or not you should have multiple Google My Business profiles or whether you should just have one, consider the local aspect and remember, walk in the shoes of your best customer or best prospect what would resonate and be important to them. You could have one for corporate, which is the overall, the umbrella and the overall organization that has all the services and products and the voice of the brand. But you also have the local community and that's equally, if not more important. We see that when you look at physical locations as they expand out and they become involved with Rotary or the Stock Show or the United Way 
or different organizations because they want to show that they are still a good corporate citizen of that local community. This is a great way for you to insert yourself and also be accepted as a local organization and a local business because you do have a local presence there. So keep that in mind. You don't have to sacrifice that kind of local touch just because you've scaled. Now, there are some businesses that are ineligible for a Google My Business profile, like a rental or a for sale property, such as a vacation home or a model home or maybe even vacant apartments. But the sales and leasing offices, those are eligible to become Google My Business profiles and for verification. So if your business hasn't opened yet also, that's a common question that I receive whenever I'm doing a webinar. And you can create a Google My Business listing and this profile can actually help you let your community know that you're going to be opening soon. So you're gonna set your future opening date and you can engage with customers and announce when and where you'll be open for business. To do this, what you'll do is you'll create your business profile and be sure to choose the verify later. That option is what you want to choose, so that's verify later. And when you're prompted to verify, that's when you'll choose it. Now you can set your future opening date before you even verify your business. And this way that'll prevent your business from falsely appearing on Google as open. Lastly, keep in mind, repurpose your current social whenever you're utilizing or thinking about what you can utilize for your post and your content within Google My Business. You want your content to be seen on this platform too, not just in all the social platforms. Now, if you're the person handling it or you're working with a, a, a freelancer or a group, they might feel that this is like you're repeating yourself. Uh, you said it here on Facebook, you sent out an email about this, you tweeted, you put something on Instagram about this. Really, we don't want to cover this anymore. We feel like we've covered this topic completely. And I have sat across from organizations or individuals who have very strong opinions about that. But I will tell you, you are going to feel like your marketing is repeating itself more than anyone else out there will even realize that that's happening because you're in the thick of it. You absolutely have that feeling because you're seeing this consistently every day. It's on your mind. You're thinking about it creatively. It's not on the top of mind for your customers yet. It needs to be seen several places. And as I shared, not everybody is on the same social networks. We see a whole bunch of diversification in the different networks they're at, but unification and the fact that they use Google as their search engine. Make sure you take advantage of that. As a small business, you are flexible enough to be able to take what you're posting within social or within your email marketing and also add it here within Google My Business. As you approach and talk to organizations or an individual about handling this for you, make sure you find out what their thought is on this. Because if they are worried about you repeating yourself or they're worried about, um, uh, they're wanting to make sure that they sell you the opportunity to for them to create content for you, I would take pause for a moment and think, is that really what you need? Most often than not, it isn't. A lot of times we just underutilize our content and instead of just creating content 24 seven, it's important to curate content, even from your own content within your own networks and feed. Now let's take a look at the anatomy of a Google My Business profile. This will give you a, a chance to really see your way around. And this is what my profile looks like on maps. So when someone discovers your profile, they'll see the information about your business, like your address or your phone number, and then also your contact hours of operation and even more like photos. For example, you can see photos here. I'm going to get this scrolling so you can actually see what photos are available to you. There we go. You can do posts as well. You see attributes right here. So these photos and they're also videos that you can post if they're 15 seconds or less. This will help give customers a preview of your store or your products or services. Again, this could work for home-based businesses and businesses by appointment too. You don't have to have a location to be able to do this. You just have to fo be focused in your local area, which that's the power of Google My Business is your local marketing and local search engine optimization. You'll also see quick links here too, right here. 
that they can quickly go to your website. In this instance, I'm actually utilizing the Google My Business free website. And I'll talk about this in future videos, how you can use this to make sure that you get even more visibility because such a wonderful tool, whether you're using it as an actual website or a landing page. Now also you'll see here that you can put um, location information and you can also have photos here for people to see. That's what I was talking about a moment ago, your Google My Business post, and it highlights your reviews too. People have the opportunity now to see third-party validation and social proof that you are good at what you do. Well, thanks for tuning in right now. And I hope this is helpful to you as you make your decision on how you're going to manage your Google My Business profile either if you're doing it yourself or you're bringing in someone or an organization or agency to do this for you. Now I've covered just the high points and the basics of Google My Business. There are other things like messaging, sending, setting up your calendar, invite the booking tool, how to set up offers for people who follow you. And I'll cover that in more videos to come. If that's of interest to you, make sure you do subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you every Thursday. We put out a new video here or within the Market and Moments group and community. We always stay in conversation about how you can market and moments and increase your impact and your income online. Yes, I hope that's helpful for you. Anytime that I can empower a small business as they go through all the plethora of decisions they need to make in a day or to make to make sure that they're getting the best of their online visibility. Anytime I can make you feel empowered and armed and ready to make some good decisions is a good day. Thank you.